Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming and attending today. Um, as Jancy mentioned, uh, my name is Adriana, and uh, I am a space artist. Um, I earned my undergrad in scientific illustration in 2016, and I worked as a freelance illustrator for about seven years, focusing primarily on astronomical illustration. Um, as Jan Jancy mentioned, um, I'm very involved with the International Association of Astronomical Artists, the IAAA for less of a mouthful. Um, and my work has been published in Astronomy Magazine, and I have a, a painting on permanent display at Kennedy Space Center. Um, I wanted to give you a little sample so you can see some of my work from the past. Um, I enjoy working in both digital and traditional media. The two images in the middle here are oil paint and the outer two are digital paintings. Um, during the start of the pandemic, I put a lot of my illustration work aside um, so that I could earn my master's degree in conservation biology, which brings us to the present day um, in which I now primarily work as an environmental scientist. Um, and even though I've shifted gears in my career, the switch has only served um, has only served to like further illuminate the importance of science communication for me and the need for passionate creators like all of you listening um, out there today. All right, so let's jump into what we're going to focus on today. There's a lot to cover in space art history, um, but we're specifically going to focus today on depictions of humans living and working in space. We're going to do this by looking at what I consider to be the five main eras of space art. And I'm specifically talking about visual arts and illustration here. As we cover these five eras, I want you to consider these three main questions. How have our ideas of people living and working in space changed over time? What major themes does space art address throughout all five eras? And what role has space art had in space exploration and what role will it have in the future? Let's start with a timeline of the five eras. First, we have the origins of flight, spanning from the late 1800s to the early 1900s. Second is the pre-Apollo era from 1940 to 1958. Third is the Apollo era from 1958 to 1972. Fourth is the shuttle era, and uh, I also consider this the era of international cooperation from 1972 to 2011. And lastly, we have the fifth era, representing a revolution in technology and commercial space flight capabilities, spanning from 2011 to the present. So let's dive in and take an in-depth look at some of the art created during each of these eras. Let's start with the origins of flight. We take it for granted now, but the idea of sending humans to live and work in space is a relatively new one. Even the idea of flight itself is relatively brand new in human history. Think about it, before the Wright brothers took the first flight at Kitty Hawk in 1903, we solely relied on creative people to spark our imaginations with fantastical ideas of flight and space travel through stories and paintings and drawings. Um, so let's take a look at some of those early influential images of space travel. First, we have Jules Verne's influential novel, From the Earth to the Moon, illustrated by Henri de Montal. This story and its illustrations are especially notable because although they were not the first depiction of humans in space, they represent the first attempt at real calculations and scientific accuracy that caught people's attention. The other significance marked by this novel is the invention of new language to describe new ideas about space travel. This includes the first known use of the word spaceship, which appeared in a description about Jules Verne's work in the Pall Mall Gazette in 1880. Notice how the scientific accuracy of this spaceship is limited by the extent of our knowledge at this time. What do you see that is obviously inaccurate to us now? How about the fact that the capsule is still experiencing gravity or the lack of attention to the vacuum of space? So clearly it's not a perfect design, but you can see echoes of how real future space travel will work. Next, we jump forward in time to just after the Wright brothers, first flight, and only three years after Robert Goddard's launch, Robert Goddard launched the first liquid-fueled rocket. And we already have people dreaming of not just traveling to space, but living in space. This is Frank R. Paul's idea of what living in space would look like. It is the first color painting of a space station published in the US. 
Paul based his illustration on Hermann Nordung's space station design, which was the first detailed technical design of a space station. Here you see some of Nordung's design ideas. And here you can see how Nordung's designs were incorporated into Paul's final illustration. Now that already brings us to the pre-Apollo era. This is the era where spaceflight and the idea of humans living and working in space be begins to feel like a real possibility, especially after increasing successes in rocketry. We're going to look at how space art of the time was used to both accurately depict space science as it evolved and how it was used to fuel the explosion of people's interest in space travel by depicting imaginative scenes of humans living in space. Now that space travel and space flight are beginning to seem like possibilities and not just a futuristic fairy tale, we see artists start to really think about how the human body could exist in the harsh environment of space. Here you see British Interplanetary Society members R.A. Smith and Henry Ross thinking through the details of a spacesuit, considering factors like the need for pressure, heat, oxygen, and mobility. How do we take the essential life conditions created by Earth's atmosphere with us as we explore space. Today, we see spacesuits as the symbol of astronauts and space travel, but remember this was a brand new concept at the time. And here's a, a more detailed cutaway of Ross and Smith's spacesuit design. Next, we're going to look at several habitat designs created by artist Fred Freeman. Notice how the level of detail has changed compared to Montau's capsule illustration and Paul's space station. Our knowledge of space science has already drastically increased by this point, and Freeman's habitat designs reflect this. I encourage you to really inspect Freeman's depictions of lunar bases and space stations and think about what aspects probably seemed advanced at the time, but now seem antiquated based on our current knowledge. And consider the opposite as well. What aspects of these illustrations still seem advanced? Did we achieve these visions? All right, moving on. Uh, so far, we've covered primarily one style of art that's rigid, realistic, technical illustrations. And this style was very common in Western depictions of space at the time and was significantly influenced by the work of Chesley Bonestell, who is now considered the father of modern space art. Here we see Bonestell doing his best to accurately depict what astronauts visiting Mars would really look like. Other artists like Klaus Bergel stuck to this model, doing their best to accurately depict all of the technical aspects of living and working in space. At the same time, we finally start to see other artists like Nikolai Kolchitsky expand past the technical to explore the emotional aspects of space travel and break out of the realistic style that dominated space art up until that point. And here's a really beautiful comic panel by artist Wally Wood. Now we move on to the Apollo era, covering projects Gemini and Mercury through the end of the Apollo missions. A great deal of the space art created during this time documents the work on the ground and is centered around the theme of astronaut heroism. Let's first take a look at my favorite piece of Apollo documentation art, Paul Calais' The Great Moment. This painting is spectacular for a number of reasons. First, the execution of the painting technique is beautiful, and in real life there's an additional, additional element of texture because the paint of the moon rock sticks up off of the canvas. Second, this painting is very successful in capturing the essence of the moment. The viewer's angle makes you feel like you're right there. The choice of the flat black in the background makes you understand the desolation of the moonscape, and the choice of composition with Neil placed far to the left and so much of the area visible to the right of his boot implies that there is more to come, more missions and exploration await us. Mm, beautiful painting. <laughs> okay, moving on. Next up we have Alexei Leonov's Spacewalk. This painting is a great contrast to Calais. We're finally getting a taste of abstraction here. And what makes this painting especially significant is that, as some of you probably already know, Cosmonaut Alexei Leonov was the first person to conduct a spacewalk. What a treasure he has left us, sharing his unique experience and place in human history through painting. Switching gears back to depictions of humans living in space, here's a good example of what we imagined would come after Apollo, 
Notice anything that looks familiar? We're already considering how space shuttles and space stations would function as our gateway to further explore into the solar system. So after the Apollo missions wrap up in 1972, artists are left feeling energized from our successes and the door seemed to be open to so many possibilities. This next era spanning from 1972 to 2011 is defined by our visions of the future and by the space shuttle program and our attempts at international cooperation. I consider this era to be the golden age of space art. There was a huge increase in the amount of space imagery produced both in the realms of science and sci-fi and many of the works produced were central to constructing our narrative of how we viewed space as the new final frontier. Let's start by looking at some images of space colonies produced right after Apollo ended. Rick Guidis' illustrations are some of the most well-known depictions of space colonies. What we see in his images is where we thought we were going. He explored what it would look like to live in orbiting space stations, you know, how would they function, and what would multi-generational long-term life aboard one look like? Here's another orbiting space colony as depicted by Don Davis. Davis was especially interested in considering what parts of life on Earth we would need to bring with us. We rely on the interconnectedness of all life on Earth to survive. So what does that mean for a space colony? As Jancy mentioned, how do you make a space colony sustainable? Next, we have an example from the incredibly prolific artist, Robert McCall. And some of you may already be familiar with his work. Um, he has huge murals that adorn the inside of the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. McCall created many images of people living and working in space. My favorite thing about his work is his use of color, composition, and lighting to create a feeling of hope and achievement. And here we have a couple more of his ideas of what living on Mars would look like. And here, I wanted to show you an example of how space art of this era sought to improve international relations. Artists like Pam Lee participated in space art workshops with fellow Soviet artists to share with the world their vision of an exciting future rooted in cooperation. I'd like to pause here also to note that this is our first example of a female space artist. The history of space art was, and still largely is, dominated by the voices of men and is sorely lacking in diversity. And to wrap up this era, we finished with my favorite space painting, Minsky's Oh God, How Tired I Am. This is thematically a large departure from what we've been looking at so far, isn't it? We've moved past only depicting the heroism of astronauts to stop and see astronauts for who they really are, human. Wherever we go in the cosmos, all of our human tendencies, characteristics, and emotions, whether good or bad, come with us. And now we've arrived in our final era, the technological and commercial spaceflight revolution, spanning from the end of the space shuttle missions in 2011 to the present. This era is marked by a major shift in how technology has, has changed how we make space art. Many artists now use digital media instead of traditional drawing and painting, and our robotic exploration of the solar system now allows for the high quality direct imaging and photography of astronomical art objects. Unlike before, we now have a vast library of references to use. And advances in commercial spaceflight tease us with a future of private space flights that might also include astronaut passengers. We've also become jaded to the fact that we've had a constant rotating crew of humans actually living in space on the International Space Station since 2000. Notably, this era is also marked by how unprecedented global pressures like the environmental crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic, and inequity shape our views of space exploration. Let's start by looking at Two Worlds by David Hardy. Hardy has been a major voice in the space art community since the 1950s, but here in one of his later works, we see him reflecting on the why of space exploration. And that is something I would encourage any space artist to always take into account with their work. Why do we explore space? Why do we send humans to space? Next, we have an illustration by Jason Riley. This is a good example of the role that digital art and more specifically 3D visualization now plays in space art. I think it's also important to take a look at how we now visualize living and working beyond the moon and Mars. 
In this illustration, Michael Carroll envisions how we might explore Saturn's moon, Enceladus. And next up is Brian Larson's Close Encounter. Look familiar? Larson is borrowing, borrowing <laughs> I can't speak, from the space colony imagery of the 1970s, giving us uh, a more intimate glimpse into the human moments of living in space. Notice how he's also making our relationship with nature the focal point of the image. We are also finally seeing new voices and visions in the field of space art. This painting by Amber Allen challenges us to reevaluate who we envision astronauts as and how our perception of space exploration may be tainted by antiquated views. And finally, our last painting is by Lucy West. I'd like to bring us back not to the technical side of space habitat structure or futuristic space travel, but back to the big picture. Why do we explore? And how do our origins inform the journey ahead of us? And that brings us to the end of this brief history of humans and space art. Um, I'd like to end by asking you to consider what's next? Where is the trajectory of space exploration going? And what will the space artist's role in that journey be? I'd also like to share this select list of space art books that you may be interested in. Um, I'll share my slideshow with Jancy when we're done so that she can share it with all of you. And thanks for listening and letting me share my ideas about space art. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.